Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, your servant Philip, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to him and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light and peace through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had a need. from the first epistle of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus' Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, 
and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came to among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. quizzes and quiz shows on the telly. One of my favourites is The Chase. When it was first broadcast, I was especially intrigued by The Chase's nicknames. The Dark Destroyer, The Governess, The Vixen, The Beast and The Cinnamon. This last one did puzzle me though. As far as I could tell, the chap known as The Cinnamon seemed to be really quite a decent guy. In fact, he's even a doctor. So why was he given the label of Cinnamon? It all becomes clear when you find out that his name is Paul Sinner. Sinner becomes Cinnamon, a quite straightforward play on words. Nicknames can be a bit odd though, can't they? And sometimes appear completely illogical. For example, my brother Ian is called Joe by his bell ringing friends. And I was briefly known as Josephine during my time in the bell tower. Hmm. And what about poor Thomas that we heard of in today's gospel? For centuries he's been tagged as Doubting Thomas, a name that I feel is unfairly attributed to him. I do admit to having a soft spot for Thomas, and today I'd like to start a campaign to restore his reputation and hopefully help people to see him in a new light. Throughout the ages, anyone who looked for proof to back up their belief has been called a doubting Thomas, because they lived by the saying, seeing is believing. Having been hoodwinked a few times myself, I believe a healthy dose of scepticism can be a good thing, although I hope one day to see proof that the Loch Ness Monster is real. But back to Thomas, I have to ask myself why he didn't immediately believe his fellow apostles when they said that Jesus had appeared to them after the crucifixion. After all, it wasn't Jesus that he doubted, but the word of his community. Thomas's disbelief was not in Jesus, but in the credibility of his friends. Had they played tricks on him in the past, or maybe wound him up in other ways? We simply don't know. But there are some things we do know about Thomas. 
we know that he was one of the original twelve that Jesus called to follow him, and he didn't hesitate to do so. Trusting Thomas. When Jesus warned of the troubles and persecution they would face, and that the apostles must rely on God, Thomas accepted this responsibility, showing bravery and loyalty to Jesus. Brave Thomas. Loyal Thomas. In John chapter 6, many disciples abandon Jesus after hearing some hard truths, and he asks the twelve if they will leave him too. They stay, Thomas among them, again showing his loyalty and belief in Jesus. We know that when Lazarus died and Jesus planned to return to Judea and Jerusalem, the apostles reminded him that the people there wanted to stone him and were looking for an opportunity to put him to death. It was Thomas who, realising Jesus was determined to go to his friends, speaks up and says, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Thomas is willing to stand by Jesus, even to the point of death. Fearless Thomas. Loving Thomas. Have I convinced you yet that Thomas deserves a better legacy than being the doubter? Perhaps like him you need a little more evidence. So here goes. Let's look at the Last Supper. The apostles are gathered in the upper room and Jesus is preparing them for what is to come. But he doesn't explain this in a direct way. He talks of his father's house having many rooms that the apostles know the way to the place he is going. His language is almost a riddle for them to solve. Can you remember being at school and the teacher asking a question that you didn't understand? Remember the sheer relief that you felt when someone else bravely put their hand up and asked for clarification? I imagine this is how the apostles felt when Thomas asked, Lord, we don't know where you are going, So how can we know the way? He wanted to follow Jesus, but how could he if he didn't know where to go, which route to follow? So he asked, straightforward Thomas, direct Thomas. So in today's gospel, we come back to the same upper room, eight days after Jesus appeared to the other apostles. Of course, over the past week, they would have told Thomas all about the appearance of the risen Lord, how he appeared in front of them despite the locked doors, how his appearance filled them with joy and hope. They would have told Thomas of the mission Jesus gave them, of the promise of the Holy Spirit to strengthen them. But Thomas hadn't been there, didn't see for himself and didn't believe them. Where was he? Why wasn't he there? We can't know that for certain either, but we know that the apostles were scared enough to keep the doors locked, but that Thomas had ventured outside. Courageous Thomas. On his return, he has told this amazing story of Jesus' appearance. Jesus is risen, all will be well. So why was the door still locked? Why were his friends not out and about spreading the good news instead of hiding away? No wonder he was sceptical. No wonder he said to them, Until I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. And so he waited. Patient Thomas. Eight days later, Jesus again came and stood among them, and in an act of love, gave Thomas permission to reach out and touch his wounds. By doing this, Jesus showed his understanding that this is what Thomas needed to confirm his faith. In the end, Thomas didn't touch Jesus. His faith was anchored in the loving act and words of Christ. Because you have seen me, you have believed. And he was able to declare, my Lord and my God. We aren't able to see Jesus' wounds for ourselves. And yet Jesus recognises the faith that we have in him. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. So while we consider alternative titles for Thomas, be it brave, loyal, Thomas the fearless, Thomas the loving, patient, 
or courageous. I believe the most fitting nickname is the one that each of us share with him and which was given to us by Christ himself. Blessed. We are blessed when we accept the authentic traditions and teachings of the Church, when we welcome Jesus through the words of the Bible. We are blessed through the sacraments. We are blessed when we recognise Jesus in the lives of the saints. And we are blessed when we reach out to Jesus in the people we meet each day. And so we ask the living God, for whom no door is closed, no heart locked, to draw us beyond our doubts, that we may rejoice in him and be worthy to be called blessed. Amen. My flesh in hope shall rest and for a season slumber Till Trump from east to west shall wake the dead in number At Christ that once was slain that thus his feet a prison Of faith had been in vain but now hath Christ arisen, 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 arisen. Death's fight hath lost its chill since Jesus crossed the river. Lover of souls, strong will, my passing soul That once was slain, that burst his three day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now hath Christ arisen, 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 arisen. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Faithful God, we praise you for the resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ from the dead. Shed his glorious life on all Christian people, that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Almighty God, we ask you to be a real and living presence in your church throughout the world. Wherever we are lacking in faith and courage, strengthen us with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, 
We pray for peace in our troubled world. Wherever nations are at war and people are suffering, we pray for true reconciliation. Protect all Christian people in the nations of the world and help them to influence their countries for the good of all. And we continue to pray for a fair and equitable distribution of the coronavirus vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all families whose homes are disrupted by anger and bitterness and where relationships are breaking up, exacerbated by the stress of the pandemic. We thank you for the gift of your Son, who walks with us on our life's journey, and as he gladdened the hearts of his friends when they saw him raised from the dead, may he travel alongside all who are struggling with family life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, when this pandemic ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be, we were called to be, we hope to be. And may we stay that way, better for each other, because of the worst. Loving God, comfort the sick and suffering with your living presence. Heal and strengthen weak bodies, calm confused minds, and reassure the lonely with your company. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we remember before you those who have died in the hope of resurrection. Unite us with them in your undying love. Help us to always remember that death could not hold your Son, Jesus Christ, and that new life for him means new life for all who believe in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your Son, Jesus Christ, stands among us, and we have seen the marks of your saving love. Breathe on us with the power of your Holy Spirit, and send us out to share in the peace of Christ with all who may cross our paths in the weeks ahead. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the risen Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Jesus, true vine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live, let us share your death passion and resurrection. Make us perfect in your love. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. 
And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. For through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Of God, you take. 
Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Him.